Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm David, and I'm here with Suresh, and we're going to present the results of the AVA Kinetics and Active Speaker Challenges um, as part of the Activity Net Workshop at CVPR 2021. This presentation will start with a short overview of the tasks and an announcement of the winners. And then we're going to have six short talks by the winning teams um, of both the AVA Kinetics and the active speaker tasks. Now about the task. AVA is a family of video data sets based around the task of recognizing human actions and localizing them in space and time. The two tasks we'll be focusing on this year are generic human action detection with AVA Kinetics and speaker detection with active speaker. I'm going to start by presenting the results for AVA Kinetics. First, a bit about the AVA Kinetics task. The original AVA dataset and challenge was to identify 80 basic human actions and to localize them in time and space wherever they appear in the video. AVA is challenging because the task requires correctly identifying potentially multiple people performing multiple actions. Last year, we introduced a larger data set by applying the dense atomic action labels um, from AVA to the wide diversity of natural scenes depicted in the well-known kinetics data set. Um, the resulting data set, AVA kinetics, is much larger with 1.6 times as many annotated frames and over 500 times many, as many unique videos. The task for the AVA Kinetics Challenge is to localize the 60 most common AVA classes in space and time on the combined AVA Kinetics test set. The performance metric is the mean average precision evaluated at 0.5 IOU. This year, we had 11 teams participating, making a total of 33 submissions. Um, and improving over last year's winner by about one point of mean average position. And now onto the winners. In third place, we have the Visual Analysis of Humans team from Oppo Research. In second place, we have the team from Fujitsu Research, improving upon their third place finish in the previous year. And in first place, we have the entry from the Alibaba Group and Tsinghua University. So congratulations. I'd like to point out that um, members of this team also won the challenge back in 2018. So great work on your repeat performance. Mm -hmm. And the numbers of the winning teams. So you'll see that the winner here got a combined MAP of point. 4067. Um, and if you look at the breakdown between the numbers on kinetics and the AVA parts of the data, you'll see that uh, the kinetics data set is proving a little bit more challenging than the original AVA data. And then if we compare the entries from last year and previous years, we'll see that this year's winner improved over the previous year's winner, a car by about um, one point of MAP. And the last year's winner proved a very difficult um, competitor to overcome. Uh, and it still scores second in the overall leaderboard of, um, of entrance to the AVA Kinetics Challenge. So thanks again to all the winners on the AVA Kinetics Challenge. And I'll pass it over to Suresh. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Sorish, and I will start with a brief overview of the active speaker task and then go on to announce the winners. So um, this data set should be familiar by now, but just to recap quickly, this is our third iteration of the AVA active speaker challenge as a track in the ActivityNet guest workshops. Um, we released this data set as part of the Roth et al. 2019 paper. Um, and the image on the left shows you an example of the richness of conversation in this case in the movies data set, where um, the bounding boxes and their colors indicate whether a person is speaking or not. So a green bounding box indicates that the person is speaking at a particular time, red indicates that they are not, and yellow indicates that they're speaking, but they're not audible right now. Um, and this hopefully gives you a sense of how rich the conversation dynamics can be in 
settings that um, automated computer systems have to deal with. And we have various other visualizations of the label data on the links that are provided here as well. Um, the active speaker detection task at ActivityNet provides a bounding box as input, and the participants are required to determine whether each specified face is speaking or not. They have access to temporal information about the face. There is a face track that is provided. Um, and they can, of course, use any other um, sources of information from the video. For example, other speakers who may be present, present in the scene, um, as well as the audio. The evaluation metric here, again, is MAP. Um, but the bounding boxes are already provided, so we don't have to worry about um, the overlap or IOU in this case. A uh, quick recap of the data set sizes. Um, for training, we've released 153 videos with about 3.5 million bounding boxes in total, spanning nearly 40 hours of data. The held out labels come from 109 videos. There's just over 2 million labeled bounding boxes that all the participants provide predictions for as probabilities. Um, and this is used to compute the MAP. All right, so moving on to the results. Um, in third place this year, we have the National University of Singapore. Um, in, in second place, we have the Technical University of Munich. And in first place, um, the winner of the 2021 Active Speaker Challenge is the Institute of Computing Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, collaborating with the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Tomorrow Advancing Life Education Group. Congratulations to all the winners. Uh, quickly summarizing the results this year, the winning entry had an MAP of 0 0.9344. Um, the second place, Technical University of Munich, came in with 0.9185 and National University of Singapore at 0.9082. Um, and this year in particular has made impressive advances with the numbers showing an improvement of 5.6% absolute MAP over the previous best result. And this is an almost 50% relative error reduction. Um, they've built on the work from Alcazar et al, who won in 2020 in modeling relationships between speakers and extended it in exciting creative ways that we'll hear about in the next set of talks in this session. Um, so that wraps up the introduction that David and I um, wanted to present here. Um, there's obviously much more information on the ActivityNet website. Uh, the AVA website link is also here. Um, up next, we'll hear from the top three teams for, for both tasks. These are guest talks, eight minutes each. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing all the exciting things that they've been up to in getting to the winner's slots in this challenge. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Yu Tongfeng from Tsinghua University at Alibaba Group. Today, I'm very glad to share our first place solution to the AVA Kinetics Crossover Challenge 2021, which is named as Relation Modeling in Spatial Temporal Action Localization. I will present our solution in four parts. An overview of this challenge, our design pipeline, details of methods and experimental analysis, and the conclusion. First is overview. The task of Eva Kinetics Challenge is to recognize and localize atomic actions in both spatial and temporal dimensions. The predicted results are given by labeled bounding boxes and one FPS. There are 80 classes containing 14 post classes, 17 person interaction classes, and 49 object interaction classes. Besides, the challenge is a crossover of two different datasets, AVA and Kinetics. AVA contains long moving videos, while Kinetics contains short daily videos collected from YouTube. And the two datasets are in different scales. Also, from the official report, 
we know that the distributions of categories of AVA and kinetics are also different. Then I will present our pipeline. Our pipeline contains four parts. Person detection. Given the input video clip, we firstly select the keyframe and apply a person detector to generate bounding boxes of people. At the same time, a video backbone is used to extract video features. Then, we pull the person features, and the relation modeling model is applied to learn the relations among people in the same video. And finally, we predict actions of each person based on their learned features. Now, I will introduce details of our method together with experimental analysis. First is the person detection. We use G focal V2 as a 2D detector. We develop three versions of train detectors, and in this table, we show the influence of person detection. Taking kinetics, for example, with the increasing of detection results, the final results obtain significant improvement. And we see each version introduce about 1 MAP for action detection. Also, we apply the ground truth bounding boxes. The final results achieve improvements of 7 and 13 MAP for AVA and kinetics respectively. We show that the person detection is still a bottleneck for this challenge. Then for the video feature extraction, we use video backbones to generate 3D feature maps. In our solution, we mainly use two backbones, the slow-fast model using different FPS to model actions, and the CSN, Channel Separated Network, a strong CNN model to obtain video representations. All the video backbones are pre-trained on Kinetic 700 dataset for better representation. Then the relation modeling is the main part of our pipeline. We first pull person features with the inflated 2D bounding boxes of the 3D feature map by ROI align. The pulled person features are further fused together with the video feature map while channel-wise concatenation and convolution layers. To model hidden relations among persons inside the same video clip for improving the effectiveness of action prediction, we fed the person features into our relation modeling model with transformer-based blocks. To specify the spatial and temporal relations, we select features along the same spatial or temporal dimension from different persons, and are named as S-only and T-only. The selected features are flattened into a sequence of tokens and fed into a transformer encoder block to model their relations via attention mechanism. And it is noted that the weights of transformers share the same weights of all sequences of positions. We also adapt the memory back for using long-term features in relation modeling. The original memory back is maintained online during the training stage. However, since videos in kinetics are not densely annotated, which means only one clip is labeled for each video. Thus, maintaining memory back for kinetics in the training stage will be more challengeable for computation cost and memory usage. To address this problem, we propose a two-stage solution, which combines online and offline strategies. In the first stage, we either train only on AVA or ignore the back of kinetics. Then for the memory features are pulled offline for kinetics. And we fine-tune the model in the second stage with frozen memory back. Results in this table show better performance of our method, and it is better to train on both AVA and kinetics in the two stages. Finally, we present our action prediction. First, for different types of actions, we use softmax loss function for single class of poses and single mode loss function for multiple class of person and object interactions. Then for long tail distribution of EVA kinetics, we use a decoupled training strategy, which contains a representation learning stage in a normal way and a classifier learning stage with class balanced sampling. From the table, it is shown that 
the small classes in bottom 20 classes achieve improvement of 1 MAP. And the, in the meanwhile, the results of the ten, top 20 classes almost do not drop. We show our final results. Comparing results with different backbones, relation heads, print train datasets, input frames, and memory bags. We ensemble 15 models with average voting and achieves 40.97 MAP on the validation set and 40.67 on the test set, which shows less overfitting on the validation. And in conclusion, we reach a higher performance on EVA kinetics with both single and ensembled model. For the future directions to further improve the result, we could improve the referred bottleneck person detection and take a deep study on the long-tailed learning of this challenge. And that's all of my presentation. Welcome to visit the web page of our lab. The action recognition models have been implemented on our machine learning system. Welcome to experience. And thanks for listening. Please feel free to contact us. Hello, everyone. I'm Xian Tan Zhu. I'm from Fujitsu Company. It's my honor to introduce my report about special temporal localization. The challenge one, AVA kinetics crossover. My report topic is context filter for acting localization. Next, I will introduce my report from three aspects. First, overview of the task. Second, introduce details of our solution. Third, give out our experiments. Now I will overview the task. This is a special temporal action localization task. The challenge name is AV and Kinetics Crossover Challenge 20 and 21. It is to localize the portion in time and space. There are three kinds of action. Pose, portion to object and portion to portion interaction. In the finger, seat is pose, right drive are portion to object interaction. Lesson to talk to are portion to portion action. Next, I will introduce the details of our solution. This page show our solution. What is the contact filter? The filter is pulled from the output of 3D CNN. Why we use contact filter? For some complex cases, we need a more filter for classification. Not only person object filter, but a contact filter. For example, in the finger, the woman is swimming in the sea. RFB method just use person filter output the post as standard. For alpha action, it uses person filter and object filter. It also output her post as standard. So we take the contact filter into account. Here the contact filter is water. We output her post as swimming, not stand. This part so our baseline model. Because alpha action has achieved the state of the art performance about 32.42 MAP on the AVA validation dataset, we take it as our baseline model. The finger saw the pipeline of it. First, do portion detection and object detection on the keyframe. Second, crop portion filter and object filter from the output of 3D CNN. Then, do POM interaction aggregation to enhance the portion filter. Finally, the output I structure is passed to the final classifier for predictions. This part, so our solution one, PCM, P. 
O plus C M. First, we average pull the output of 3DCN to get the context filter. Then, we do POMC interaction aggregation to enhance the portion filter like alpha aggregation. Besides, we found that adding context filter to every object filter can also improve the performance. This part show our solution to crop portion filter like RCN. We adopt alpha action as our baseline. We are inspired by RCN method that here revolution of actor contributor to better performance. So we cropped the replicated portion patch from original video and reset to a fixed revolution. In detail, we don't get the portion filter from ROI pooling. Based on detection result, we cropped and reset Forcing pads. Then take them as the input of 3D CN and the average pulling them on special dimension. Next, I will introduce our experiments. This bit so how to fuse contact filter into POM. First, we build a mini. AV dataset for a quick experiment, which contains one over three keyframes of each video. We can see from the table when replace the object filter with context filter, it can speed up the convergence without lower too much MAP. Also, we can see the original method can be input by 1.1 MAP with PCM POM structure. This page so our experiments about enhanced object filter with context filter. From the table we can see with enhanced filter the MAP gets about 0 0.21 and 0.74 gains onto dataset than the original model. This page shows our result of cropping portion filter like RCN. We select three classes which are improved most. So in the table, drink, smoke, write. From the table, we can see drink is improved by 0.1253 than our best result. The last page show our fusion and final submission. We fuse two models with mean method. The first model PCM PO plus CM. The second model POM with RCN method. After fusing we got 36.25 MAP, which gets 2.05 gains than the better one. For final submission, we trained with AV and kinetic stream wall dataset, test on three scales and flipping. Our final result is 37.5 43 MAP on the test set and uh, ranking second in this task. Okay, that's all. Thanks for your watching. Hello everyone, we are the team visual analysis of humans. I'm Shimi Chen. Our members have Wei Li, Chen Chen, Xun Qiang Tao, Yan Dong Guo. Next, we will describe our solution to this spatial temporal action localization task.
we will expand the discussion from the following parts. With the development of internet, tons of videos are continuously generated in video content platforms, showing that video understanding becomes more and more indispensable. To further analyze the video content, we still need to get actions and positions of each person in clips. This task is intended to evaluate the ability of masters to localize human actions in space and time. Below is our solution to it. In our approach, we use an open source toolbox alpha action as baseline. In addition, we have two major contributions. The first, we know we innovatively proposed a new end-to-end -end network, which fuses post features with person features in an atomic clip to classify actions. On the other hand, we proposed a new interaction block cube fusion. The framework of our approach is showed in figure one. A detector is applied to get person boxes every second, and we set the boxes in center frame at the final boxes in this clip. We use slow fast network as backbone to extract features and perform ROI align layer to clock features. Particularly, we perform our new interaction block to fuse person features, object features, and memory features generating final global reasoning features. What's more, we have another path which applies pose information to get part features. This path will be described in the following slides. Finally, we concatenate part reasoning features and global reasoning features as fuse features. Fully connected layer is applied in both to predict actions. Postpart network is a new end-to-end -end network. Firstly, we split the person area into 10 parts based on post information. As shown in photos above, many actions are only related to several parts of the person. Like pull down is closely related to hands, playing ball is closely related to hands and feet. By learning the relationship between body part and other subjects in clip, we can get at the actions of person with more sufficient information. As shown in figure three, we concatenate person features and object features, then perform an interaction reasoning block to handle the relationship between concatenated features and 10 body part features. The interaction reasoning block is improved from the local block. Next, we use a SE block to learn the most important part feature, which has incorporated features of other body parts. In this way, the pulse part network has fully learned the relationship in this clip and will not increase network complexity largely. We proposed a new interaction block named as cube fusion, as shown in figure four. All present object features, P present person features, and M is memory features. We conduct a cube for information circulation. In this framework, there are several parts to interact with them. We also add skip layers to prevent model degradation. In short, the method we proposed is a very effective interaction block to learn in relationships between person and other subjects in clips. Now, I will show our experiment results. In double one, we compare our model with baseline in AVA dataset. We train our model with only with AVA train data. And we can see cube fusion block upgrade 0.25 percentage in MAP. In, ta in table two, train our model with AVA and kinetics data sets. Both models are equipped with a fusion, cube fusion block 
To compare the ability in classifying actions, we use ground truth bounding boxes directly. Post partner will improve the performance by 1.56 percentage in MAP. Next, my partner Wei Li will introduce the details of the experiment. Okay, my name is Wei Li. I will introduce more details about experiments. We ex extract one second video clips and keyframes from raw kinetics 10 second movies. Each video clip lasts one second and ranges from second zero to nine. The first frame of each video clip is, is extracted as keyframe, which is used to detect persons and objects and estimate pulse of persons, which follows the definition in AVA dataset. In detection and pulse process, we first use detection ResNet 101 model on AVA, while D8 detection model on kinetics. Then an alpha pulse model is used to estimate person pulse. Considering that there are 33% clips without ground truth annotations in kinetics dataset, during the inference phase, we screened out some negative samples. The details of detection model, pulse estimate model, and the deleted boxes are as follows. The MAP of two detection model are 53.9% and 41.2%, and that of post model is 73.3%. And the negative samples, such as the detection box, is too small. The boxes without face, and only part of face appeared boxes, and so on are shown in this slide too. Finally, in the future, we mainly have two works to do. One is add memory features in the kinetic dataset, and the other is to further fine tune the detection model on kinetics for higher precision. That's all. Thanks for your listening. I'm Yuan Hang, and in this video, I'm glad to present you our team's first place solution to this year's AVA Active Speaker Detection Challenge. This is a joint work with Susan, Shuang, Xiao, Zhongqin, and Shi Guang. Our team members come from Institute of Computing Technology, Chinese Academy of Sciences, University of Chinese Academy of Sciences, and the Tomorrow Advancing Life Education Group. The active speaker detection task aims to determine when each visible person in the video is speaking by analyzing audio and visual signals. There are two predominant approaches. The supervised approach formulates the task as a frame-wise binary classification problem, while the unsupervised approach uses synchronization or clustering methods to establish correspondence between the voice and the speaking face. However, these methods tend to overlook the abundant context information in the videos. As a result, they are often not robust enough in challenging scenarios with low resolution faces and multiple candidate speakers. One interesting previous work, and also last year's winning solution, is the Active Speakers in Context model, which combines audio-visual features from adjacent time intervals and other candidates in the scene to improve local predictions. However, this method still focuses on optimizing each candidate separately. Our submission to this year's AVA Speaker Challenge is based on a novel Unified Context Network, or UNICON, which leverages multiple sources of contextual information to analyze all speaker candidates simultaneously. Here, we first provide a brief recap of the UNICON model. First, the scale and position of the candidate's faces are introduced as global spatial context to complement facial information and help identify the relationships among the speakers. Each candidate is then contrasted with others from both visual and audiovisual perspectives. Temporal context is incorporated to further improve temporal consistency and robustness. Based on the aggregated contextual features, Speaker activity predictions for all candidates are generated simultaneously using a shared prediction layer. 
specifically in Unicorn, face positions and sizes of all candidates are encoded as 64 by 64 maps of 2D Gaussians. These maps are then color-coded to indicate the relationships between the candidates and embedded with a convolutional encoder, resulting in each candidate's spatial context. The relational context component then takes the initial features and refines them by considering the relationships between the candidates from visual and audiovisual perspectives. For visual relational context, it uses a permutation equivariant layer to aggregate each candidate's local activity and the person's pairwise interactions with other candidates in the scene. For audiovisual relational context, each candidate's audiovisual affinity features are contrasted with the global maximum, and non-active candidates are suppressed. In the process, bi-GRUs are used to provide the necessary temporal context. We now describe the changes we made, which leads to the new extended unicorn used in our final submission. First, the original Unicorn uses 13-dimensional male frequency capstrom coefficients as the acoustic representation. We replace them with 80-dimensional log male spectrograms, which contain richer acoustic information. In addition, we apply spec augment during training to increase our model's robustness to noise. Next, we focus on improving the temporal modeling architectures in Unicorn. The original Unicorn uses bi-GRUs for temporal context. In this work, we use the recently proposed convolution augmented transformer or conformer blocks instead. By combining convolutions with multi-head self-attention, it has a higher capacity and eventually leads to better generalization. We also use longer training samples to better capture long-term dependencies and speaker alternation patterns. Finally, the original Unicorn applies an auxiliary voice activity protection layer on the initial audio features, which led to severe overfitting in the later stages of training. We replace it with a new auxiliary speaker activity prediction layer after the contextual audio visual features. This resolves the overfitting problem and leads to a unified loss formulation throughout training. We now present our final results. For this year's challenge, we made three submissions to the ActivityNet server. The first one is based on the original Unicorn, which scores 90.7% MAP. Our new extended Unicorn performs much better and scores 93.3%. Finally, our last submission ensembles the logits from conformer and temporal convolution-based backends. It scores 93.4% and ranks first on this year's leaderboard. Remarkably, none of these submissions used any form of pre-training. Here is a comparison of our model with previous methods. As we can see, our extended Unicorn model outperforms the previous state-of-the-art by a large margin. Thanks for watching and please remember to check our site for models and future updates. Hello everyone, I am Okan Kupuklu from Technical University of Munich. This is the ASDNet submission to the ActivityNet Challenge 2021 for the task Active Speaker Detection. For audiovisual active speaker detection task, speech needs to be detected and assigned to one of possibly multiple active speakers at each instant in time. We work on AVA active speaker dataset where frame level annotations are provided. Official metric of mean average precision is used for evaluations. We propose a three stage architecture for audiovisual active speaker task. At the initial stage, audio features and video features for each person in the video clip are extracted. Then we have inter-speaker relation modeling stage where we try to capture complementary information from background speakers and use it together with reference speakers features. For example, if one of the background speakers is talking, most probably reference speaker is not talking or vice versa. 
At the final stage, we apply temporal modeling because speaking is a coherent action in time. In other words, if a person is speaking in previous time instance or future time instance, it's likely that the person is also speaking at the current time instant. Here is a more detailed view of the ASDNet architecture. Now, I will briefly mention each stage. First, we extract audio, audio and video features of each speaker in the given input clip. We have experimented with several audio and video webbones. Dif different from ma majority of previous works, we extracted audio features directly from raw audio. In audio backbone, we use sync convolutions together with depth-wise separable convolutions. We refer to this audio backbone as sync DSNet. For video backbone, we have experimented with various 3D CNN architectures, which always show superior results compared to 2D CNN architectures. We choose 3D ResNext 101 as final video backbone. Once the audio and video backbones are trained, we extract all the features for each speaker in the AVA Active Speaker dataset. Later stages of ASDNet are train trained jointly using these features. For the inter-speaker relation modeling stage, we leverage background speakers, speakers features that are complementary to the reference speakers features. We propose a simple yet effective method for this. For a preset number of background speakers, we concatenate each speaker's features and pass it through a single layer MLP. If there is more than n speakers at that time instant, we randomly select n of them. If there is less than n speakers, we use a vector populated with zeros for the missing speakers. After extracting background features, we append it to the reference speaker's features. Finally, we apply temporal modeling stage. We experimented with several RNNs for this stage. As a final decision, we use two-layer bidirectional GRU for temporal modeling. For the results, we first look at the contribution of each component to the final performance at table 1. Initially, we used only video features of the reference speaker, which achieved 78.8 MAP. Then we use only the audio features, which achieves 49.3 MAP. This performance drop is natural because if there are more than one person in the video, prediction of the active speaker becomes a random guess. In the next experiment, we used both audio and video features, which achieves 88.9 MAP. We would like to highlight that this result is higher than any previous state-of-the-art approaches, showing the importance of correct backbone selection. And we have not applied second and third stages of ASD net yet. Then we introduce temporal modeling to audio and video features, which achieves 92.6 MAP. If ISRM is used with audio and video features, 89.6 MAP is achieved. If ISRM and temporal modeling is applied together to the audio and video features, best performance of 93.5 MAP is achieved. We want to highlight experiment, experiments 6 and 7 in table 1. For these experiments, we have not used reference speaker's video features and tried to predict if reference speaker is talking by looking at the background speakers only. For these experiments, we achieved 64.5 and 67.8 MAP with and without temporal modeling, showing the importance of the information extracted from background speakers. Next, we check the effect of encoder clip length to the final performance in table 1. Although 16 frame clip length brings a 2.2 MAP improvement at the feature extract extraction stage, this corresponds to only 0.1 MAP improvement at the final performance. This is because increased clip length brings more temporal information, which could have been already captured at the temporal modeling stage. Finally, we check if the order of ISRM and temporal modeling stages can be exchanged in table 3. There is not a big difference in performance if temporal modeling stage is applied first. We now compare ASDNet with the state-of-the-art approaches at table 4. ASDNet outperforms the second best approach by 4.7 MAP on the validation set and 4.1 MAP on the test set of AVA Active Speaker dataset. 
We also compare the performance of ASD.NET by face size at table 5. ASD.NET outperforms all other state-of-the-art methods for all different face sizes. Superiority of ASD.NET becomes more significant for smaller faces. Increased number of faces makes the active speaker detection task more challenging and the performance of ISRM becomes more critical. ASD.NET outperforms all other state-of-the-art methods for all different face numbers as shown in table 6. Superiority of ASD.NET becomes more significant as the number of faces increases. For the conclusion, a three-stage architecture ASD.NET is proposed for audiovisual active speaker detection task. Each stage of ASD.NET is, is investigated and justified with detailed ablation studies. ASD.NET improves the state of the art by 4.7 MAP and 4.1 MAP on validation and test set of AVI active speaker datasets respectively. Presented results can be improved by leveraging deeper and wider feature extractors and optical flow modality. For more detailed explanation of the ASD.NET, you can refer to the paper How to Design a Three-Stage Architecture for Audiovisual Active Speaker Detection in the Wild. For the implementation, you can refer to okancop slash ASD.NET GitHub page. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, I'm glad to do this presentation for our team. Our team is National University of Singapore, HLT Group, and uh, my name is Rijia Tao. Here is our author list, and uh, I do this presentation today. So for the active speaker detection, the traditional method is use a uh, short-term method, which means when we get a few seconds of base video, we do a splitting process to get many short segments. So for each short segment, like 200 milliseconds, we use the audio and visual encoder to get one audio embedding and uh, visual embedding. Then combine these two embedding to a binary classification. The final output is one single ASD score for this short segment to present the information in this very short segment. Uh, later, there is a smoothing method for the final score lists or the score sequence. Uh, the problems in this short method is uh, can we learn meaningful as the information from such a short segment? We give an example. Here is a 200 millisecond video segment. We find that it is actually very challenging to know whether she is speaking or not in such limited information, no matter from the audio and the visual. However, for a two second video, it is clear to know when she started to speak, when she did not speak. The reason is that for the human, actually we do not judge whether these people are speaking or not based on a very short segment. We judge it based in, on the internal sentence, a few words. So if you use a very short segment, it might in, not include any words. You cannot do this judgment. So based on that, our model is used to explore long-term feature for the activity detection. We name it TalkNet. That is an end-to-end -end model. What we did is that we did not use any split process. When we input one video, we feed all the video into the audio and visual encoder to get the final output. So for instance, when we get this video, for the visual part, our visual temporal encoder can get this FV. This FV is a visual feature sequence. Uh, the model is learned from the audiovisual speech recognition. And for the audio, similarly, we use a ResNet structure learned from the speaker recognition to get this FA. This FB and FA, they are all the embedding sequence instead of the single embedding, which means the length of this embedding sequence is equal to the number of video frames in this video. Uh, the reason is that we have the specific parameter setting in these two encoders. And so based on that, uh, we use these two embedding sequence to do the cross attention to learn the modality interaction between these two modality. And it's, it can also do the modality uh, alignment. After that, in order to learn the temporal information in the whole video, we use a self-attention model. This model is similar to this cross-attention. So the final output is the audio-visual embedding sequence. This sequence has the same length of the number of video frames, which means 
For each video frame, we extract an audio visual embedding, and this embedding has learned the information in the whole video, so that can achieve our goal to extract the long-term temporal information. So based on that, we do the final LSD predictions. The final output is the LSD score sequence video frame by frame. So here is the result. Uh, we find that our method can get to 92.3 MAP in the AVA validation set and get 90.8 MAP in the test set. Uh, that can improve, uh, that result is better than the state of art result. And then we also do some uh, ablation study. Firstly, we learn whether our model can benefit from the long term information. We keep our model and we change the length of the input videos. If we simply, if we still use the submit process to submit all the videos into the short uh, segment, we find that the performance is very worse. And when we increase the number of the input video frames, our result can improve a lot. So that means our talknet is actually benefit from the long term temporal information. That is what we want in this task. And the second thing is that uh, whether the cross attention and self attention is useful. When we remove these two parts, the performance uh, will drop. And when we add these two parts, it can increase very obviously. So that means the modality interaction between the audio and visual is important. And uh, to learn the temporal uh, information between the different frames and their interaction is also important. And here, this study, uh, because in this study we use the audio augmentation method. Traditional method usually only do the visual augmentation, but we think the audio augmentation is also important. So the first line is the result with, without any augmentation, and the second line is the result with the traditional audio augmentation method in speaker recognition, which means you prepare some additional data, some additional noisy data, and add it to the original data to the augmentation. And the last one is our proposed active sampling method, which means use the audio in AI data itself as the noisy to the augmentation. That method do not use any additional method. We find that uh, these two augmentation methods are all important to improve the performance. So here are some other issues. Firstly, is that our model can train very fast. It only need seven hours in one 22G GPU. And apart from that, our model did not use any pre-trained model and uh, did not consider the relationship between the speaker appears at the same time. The formal, uh, the prior study has proved that these two facts can also improve the performance. So we think if we add these two points in our model, our improve can improve further. So that can be used for the future work. And apart from that, we will release the code model and the logs for our talknet in GitHub next month. Uh, the code will include the details of the pre-process for the AVA dataset and the whole training and validation part. Also, we will include a demo script to do active speaker detection for any video because we know that AVA already provided the face detection method. It has even given the face tracks bounding box. So for the video without that, for the video not in AVA, we need to provide the process like the face detection, screen detection, and face tracking. So for instance, we give a demo for a video not in AVA and uh, our model can extract uh, who is speaking with the green box and who is not speaking with the red box. Here is a demo. Have water in your mouth. Two people have water in their mouths. Mm -hmm. And one person has to play a bunch of funny videos and you have to try to like not laugh. Yep. And when you laugh, you have to spit it at the other person. So let's just get right into this yeah. video. <laughs> uh, so in this demo, you can find that there are many noisy and there are multiple multiple faces on the screen, so that's a challenge condition, and our model can also deal with it. Uh, so our conclusion in this task is that we find the long-term temporal context is important for active speaker detection, and the modality interaction is also important, and the audio augmentation can improve the performance. So that's all, thanks a lot.